Hi there, and welcome to Coffee with Phil, where our goal is to help you live a life of purpose on purpose. Walking with God sounds easy, but how many of you know it never follows the scripture prepared? In this podcast, Phil shares stories from his personal journey in the hopes that his experience, the good, the bad, and the ugly, will help you as you walk with God on your own journey. Grab your coffee and enjoy this practical and personal episode with your podcast host, Phil Strong. Well, good morning and welcome to the podcast. Welcome to Coffee with Phil. I say good morning because it's Monday morning for me, bright and early. Uh, Just had a beautiful sunrise, watch the uh, sun reflecting on the clouds, a little bit pink in colour. And as I made my coffee this morning, I just noticed but it's a slight drizzle outside. So there you go. Red sky in the morning. Shepherd's warning. Hey, I uh, hope you're having a good coffee this morning. I'm certainly uh, enjoying, well, about to dive into my flat white this morning, courtesy of me, uh, roasted on the weekend. Uh, fresh beans, of course, always at my place. And I want to say here's an invitation to you. If you're in the neighborhood and you want the best coffee in town, Look me up, come and hang out, because it's going to be good for you. Um, Anyway, there's an invitation for you. And uh, also, I just want to say a further invitation is make sure you're subscribing, make sure you're following, make sure you're sharing, because uh, the purpose of this podcast is really to have a conversation about where I'm at in life and making life real, things I'm learning, I'm going through, uh, hoping to share my experiences in the hope that uh, they will have a positive contribution to your journey. And as always, really open to feedback and uh, always brewing on ideas. So even if you have questions, uh, you might uh, feel free to send me those questions and we can kind of unpack them a little bit as we go. Today is episode 65. We're rocking into it. And... uh, Having fun along the way today, I want to talk about the process of distillation, distillation. And uh, if you're an astute listener, uh, prone to a wee tipple in the afternoon or evening, then you will know that distillation, you distill alcohol. It's the process by which you go through the cooking process uh, to make pure alcohol alcohol. And uh, whilst I don't want to be a supporter of alcohol abuse, I don't want to encourage people in uh, weakness. Um, Look, it's true. I enjoy the odd tipple every now and then uh, and uh, have discovered just an an amazing process of creation. Let me, let me, let me dial it back and tell you a story to start with. Uh, Not to do with distillation, but to do with a friend of mine. Uh, His name's Marty, and he lives in California, and he's a winemaker. And uh, they have a beautiful uh, tasting room in Reading, California. And uh, they have um, uh, a cellar as well. And uh, I went to visit him one day when I was there. A friend of mine introduced me to Marty, and I met him at this, um, like, non- non-impressive kind of warehouse complex with a a beat-up old truck outside the front of it. And my friend said, hey, let's bang on the door and I'll introduce you to Marty. This um, beautiful smile greeted me at the door. And uh, and, uh, and then I was handed over to my new friend for the morning. And uh, he took me for a tour through the winemaking process, which is completely different to distilling alcohol. However, Here's the point. As we were looking through the different vats of wine and the barrels of wine that he was aging, um, I had a sense that God was saying something to Marty because Marty was explaining to me how the flavors come through the different grapes. And he was explaining to me that it's basically down to nature and that, you know, sometimes when there's pollen in the air and it's floating through the vineyard and the flowers catch the, the the pollen or the spices in the air or the fragrance that's, that's blowing around because of the nature process. He says that's what affects the flavors when the, gri- the grapes become ripe. And we just marveled at the, the creation of God and all its 
beauty and um, just complexity, and yet here's God using the, the, the flowers and the pollen and the wind to flavor the wine. And of course, we all know, um, we might remember the first miracle that Jesus did was to make exquisite wine. The wedding in Cana, you can find that story in John chapter 2, if you're interested in reading it. Uh, And I heard a preacher say recently, he says, look, he said, um, that was the first public miracle of Jesus. And uh, yet he says, I'm wondering if this wasn't something that Jesus did at home. I mean, how else would his mother know to say to the stewards of the event, do what he tells you to do? Maybe they'd been enjoying exquisite wine with their dinner. Who knows? It's not in the Bible, so we can't be sure that that supposition is even true. However, in this process with Marty, we had this unique opportunity to partner with God and praying over the wines because I really felt that God was saying that we're to call out what he had prepared in creation for these different batches of wine. You know, wine gets given names and it gets um, reference to its vintage and its location. But I said to Marty under sort of some kind of prophetic utterance, I said, look, I feel like the Lord is releasing identity in the same way that Jacob in uh, Genesis 48 prophesied over the 12 tribes of Israel, so too do we have the uh, invitation to partner with heaven, with the Spirit of God, and to declare identity over the things that we're creating, because that's what Jacob did over his sons. And so we stood in the middle of this uh, rather... uh, Um, industrial environment with vats of wine aging and barrels and labels and and cork presses and and we prayed up a storm and uh, you know we had we had a good amount of fun that afternoon and uh, in case you're wondering yes uh, at some point later on we did sit on the back porch and enjoy one of those um, beautiful vintages that was produced in his uh, winery. So anyway, that was, a, that was a story to introduce you to the concept that uh, nature uh, is released through God, the creator, and uh, this process I'm talking about is just part of nature, um, can of course be abused. And I would hasten to add that that's not my intention to encourage you in that way. So let's get the coffee going. And let's enjoy this morning. Distillation is the process whereby there's a cook who creates a brew uh, based on a recipe. So each um, each expert, I don't even know what their name is, um, we might find that out and put it in the show notes for you, but each expert has their recipe of how much malt and barley and other ingredients they're going to put in the vat, and they cook it. Now, I learned about this several times, but most recently we were in Queenstown celebrating a special birthday with our daughter, and we went on a tour of the Cardrona Valley Distillery, and it was fascinating. But we walked into the first room where the vats were cooking the malt and the barley and boiling them away, and it stunk. You know, it stunk like yeast. It stunk like cooking bread. It stunk like um, old socks. It was it was hot. You know, we were high up on this gangway walking and um, looking down on what was happening, and the steam was in the room because of the heat, and it was cold outside and warm inside. And we're we're sitting there and we're like, man, this is horrible. But what they were doing is cooking and cooking and cooking to release the extract out of the process. So you can imagine when they're cooking things in the malt and 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 that sort of thing, they're killing they're killing all the bugs, but they're cooking all the goodness out, and they're making a process by where they are releasing the goodness and the steam out of this thing, and they are creating a liquid as they cool the steam to bring it into um, the process of distillation. So there's a there's a process whereby the heat, the steam, and the and the distillation. Not dissimilar, um, a little bit similar to the way that uh, a good espresso is poured with the steam extracting the flavor out of the coffee beans. So, so the Lord's got something going on there with the process of the steam. Then what happens is that if they're boiling this malt barley, what they do in, in the process that we were taken through. So again, there's unique processes, but they come up with this alcohol that gets, um, again, gets heated in a distillation process. 
and then it's condensed down again. The steam is condensed down and cooled through these pipes that comes into a charger. But what happens there is that in this process, after they've condensed it, they ended up with um, their vodka, which they then um, finished off with a beautiful flavor. It's good. It kind of tastes like banana uh, lolly water, which is um, very enjoyable. This is my coffee. Um, but what I want to say, and I don't want to dwell on this too long because the point is not the alcohol, but these guys, what they showed us is they took us through a multiple stage process. The first room, they were cooking things down and distilling it, distillation, you know, heating, making steam, chilling, cooling the steam and, and producing a spirit, a liquid, which has a high potency in it. Um, but then um, they would make the vodka out of that. Then they took us into the next room on the tour and they said we take that pure alcohol from the previous process and we distill it again we put it through a second distillation process and um, this was a, a different kind of kettle a different shape and a different construction which beyond my understanding actually has an effect on the spirit that is created and again, it's heated up and cooked over a period of time, and they're managing the temperature and, and the steam that comes off it is cooled at a certain rate, which produces this, this clear liquid, which is pure alcohol. And uh, with regards to the gin that's then made, so vodka first, and then these guys, secondly, through the second distillation process, made their gin, uh, which some people... Uh, make as a dry gin and other people add botanicals so in this process uh, you might have had a, a gin that's had a, fly, a floral kind of taste uh, to it I don't like that particularly but um, that's part of the process and so there's this two distillation process which brings the gin which again is the clear liquid uh, that is then bottled and sold as gin sometimes with botanicals in it now, if they wanted to make whiskey, they then put that through a third process, not so much of cooking, but they choose what kind of barrel they're going to age the whiskey in. And so they have um, different wine barrels. Sometimes you might have heard of uh, a whiskey that's aged in a, um, in a sherry barrel or a Pinot Noir, which is quite common in the Queenstown region. Uh, sometimes they smoke the inside of the barrel with fire and um, and that flavor is what um, of the smoky um, barrel with the oak or the or the timber that's used in the barrel that's what puts the smoky flavor some of the smoky flavor into the whiskey what's my point there's a multiple stage process first raw natural products are cooked according to a recipe which creates an extract which then is produced uh, through a distilling process to create the first stage of the outcome, which in the case of Cadrona and the tour they gave us was the vodka that they made. Then there's an additional process whereby the gin is uh, produced through distillation, a second distillation process, heated, condensed, cooled, and uh, made pure uh, for the taste, uh, according to the expert again, whose name I forget. And finally, there's an aging process, a maturation process where at minimum 10 months, the whiskey is put aside or the alcohol is put aside in barrels to be made into, matured into whiskey, according to the end goal of the person who's creating it. And, uh, you know, some, some barrels are aged for 10 years. Some uh, barrels are aged for longer and what was really interesting, I uh, met a guy at the, in the tour, he was a local, he, said he was taking his friend through, he'd been there many times, he says, oh, you should buy a barrel, it's a great investment. I was like, I beg your pardon? He says, oh, you can buy a barrel for a 10000 15000 or the good ones are 25000 and he says, you own it, you get to name it, and you get to drink it whenever you want. Uh, not quite the investment that I was looking for that afternoon, my friend. Never mind. What's my whole point in sharing this with you? Well. I see the repeated process of distillation like what's going on in my life right now. Um, it's the heating up, it's the intensity, it's the radical shift into a different form. You know, the liquid becomes steam, which is then put into a cooling process. Life's a bit like a roller coaster and um, and there's a lot going on, but, but I, I want to give you the whole point, um, because then I want to break it down a little bit, the whole point is, as I have shared with you previously, we are in a season of preparation. 
I have spoken to this uh, several times. I've been speaking to audiences about it. Uh, it's a now word uh, moment for the church. Uh, that God is preparing us for something significant. It requires us to go through his process of preparation. Uh, in Joshua chapter 3, that is referred to as consecration. Uh, in Isaiah chapter 6, I spoke of this recently, where Isaiah has a revelation uh, that is unclean, and the seraphim comes from the throne, uh, bringing a hot ember and touches his lips thereby cleaning him and preparing him to be God's messenger. Um, this uh, week in New Zealand, uh, time stamping this episode that I'm recording, it is before Easter, and therefore it is the week leading up to the Passion. Uh, it is the Passion Week, but it is also Lent, a time of preparation and setting ourselves apart in order to receive Jesus. And Palm Sunday, we just celebrated Palm Sunday, and part of that was recognizing that we prepare ourselves to receive Jesus as the King of all kings. What's my point? God's preparing us. How does God prepare us? Well, I'm giving you this example. He's taking us through a cooking process using heat to change us in form and to refine us in order that we would become the person that he desires and dreams for us to be in order that we'd be used by him in the coming move of God. Would someone please get excited about that? So that's, um, that's the big point of today. Distillation makes your life more potent. Distillation makes your life more potent. What does this mean? You know, if I look through the process that I learned in the Cardrona factory, um, was that they, the cooking process was about making the liquid that they produced more and more and more refined. Now, it also does make it more potent because at one point there was um, a very high potency to the alcohol, which would kill you. And that's obviously not the form that they're trying to produce and its end result, but it's part of the process to get there. So what does this mean for us in the middle of God's refining as he's changing our lives? The first thing that I'd have to say is increased heat is required. Um, in case he's required, you know, God's using fire. You know, in the in the in the um, story of Isaiah in, in chapter six, it's the hot coal that's taken from the altar before the throne of God. That is, you've got to imagine it's glowing white hot. If if that's a color in heaven, I'm not sure. It's glowing. It's hot because it's a it's an ember and it touches his lips. Uh, we just recently prayed through and studied through Daniel chapter 3 with the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. And uh, there's a lot of analogies we can take out of that. They were put in the fire because of their obedience to God. It was part of God proving who they were. So then you think about that. What is God doing through the process of heating you up and 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 taking you through a distillation process? He's proving who he created you to be. He's not um, just uh, intent on changing you because you're not good enough. Now that's just a negative way to look at it. The process is God created you unique for a special purpose to be um, a representation of him, and he's proving that by taking you through this cooking process, and that requires heat. What does that mean? It means intensity. It means uh, a changing of form. You cannot keep your old self. You must embrace the new self, Paul writes in Ephesians. You must become a new creation, he writes in Corinthians, because the old has gone and the new has come. And God uses heat and intensity to take us through a process of transformation. That's pretty exciting, except when you're in the fire. So um, it, would, it would be remiss of me to pass from this point to the next one before I say to you, just remember the story in Daniel chapter 3, King Nebuchadnezzar looked up and, and behold, he saw a fourth man in the fire. So if you're in the fire, just be grateful that the Son of Man is with you in the process. The second thing I want to point to is that there's multiple stages of maturity. So as I was speaking with you regarding the um, Cardrona distillery process, the first process of cooking 
smelly. There's a lot of malt and barley and mash, and they and they and they do all sorts of things and all sorts of different places. But the point is, there's multiple stages because then you go through the the refining process. So there's multiple stages to our maturity. Sometimes God's got to cook us more than once. He's got to condense us down to make us more pure. For some people, that process also requires being put in a barrel, being put in a dark room, and being left to age for a period of time. One of the hardest things for me to learn, although the most important thing for me to learn, was to serve from the shadows and lead from a distance so that I did not require the limelight or the platform for my identity. The Lord specifically took me through a long period of time where I was aging in a barrel, you could say. Unseen, unrecognized. Um, uh, look, I didn't, I'm not saying I was insecure and worried about it. I knew God was doing something and that my maturation was only going to come by his process of delay and spending time serving from the shadows in order that his timing would be the right uh, timing for me. So there's multiple stages in the maturity. God's got to cook you more than once, and sometimes he's got to put you in the barrel in the shadows in order to mature you into what he believes, uh, what he knows he created you to be. The third thing that I want to say is that this is a specialized process and requires a specialized expert. You are not that expert. Um, I always um, (laughs) default back to my weakness, which is thinking I'm the expert of my life. I know me better than anyone, and I know what I can handle. And the Lord time and time again says, son, (laughs) you're not God. I am. And so get your hands off the steering wheel and allow me to dictate the process and the pathway we're going through. This requires a yielding and a surrendering. You know, as we prepare for Jesus as the king, as he rides into Jerusalem on a donkey, humble king of peace that he is, that requires us yielding. You know, um, C.S. Lewis says, too many people choose God as their savior and forget to honor him as their Lord. A.W. Tozer says, either he is Lord of all or he is not Lord at all. So then you've got to trust God that in the process. He's the specialist, specialized one. He's got the vision of what your life's going to be in the future. He's the one that created you uniquely as a masterpiece, Ephesians 2 verse 10 says, for purposes he designed for you long before you were born. And so that's what we need to remember. The fourth and final point that I've got here, just uh, by way of encouragement, is time in the barrel leads to deeper flavor. If you're someone who currently feels sidelined or in the shadows, you're not getting the recognition you think you deserve, notice the point there, God has you in a process of maturation, and the longer you hide in God's process of maturation, the deeper the flavor will be in your life. I'll give you an example. Um, I have uh, recently embraced a discipline of taking time out and away on a regular basis uh, to, as we call it, climb the mountain to be with the Lord. Uh, Don't worry, I'm not bringing back a new version of the Ten Commandments. That's been done. But really, as me and my board sat, we realized that I needed to make room for that, and they were willing to help me to make room for that. Um, I had a time last month, and it was glorious and good. It's some amazing times with the Lord, just in conversation. I'm not really trying to create outcomes. I'm just trying to um, spend time in relationship. And I, I spoke the Sunday after I came back, and a guy in the church said to me, he's been around ministry a long time, all his life, in fact. And uh, he said to me, he said, yeah, he said, that's, that's, that's obvious, that that's a message given by a man who's been up the mountain with the Lord. And so what's my point? Time away for the Lord is demonstrated in the fruit of our lives. And if the Lord has you in a barrel, in the darkness, in a cold room, aging and maturing, it's because he's building deep flavor into you. And eventually the flavor that is produced in your life is going to be a flavor that other people can really uh, appreciate in a deeper way. So here's the, here's the, here's the close. 
Distillation, the process of distillation makes your life more potent. What do I mean by potent? Well, the definition of potent is, is, is around um, intensity, it's around um, um, impact on others, and it's also around the sharpness. So what I'm saying to you is the process God's taking you through for cooking is about making your life more intense, the flavor of your life more intense. It's, it's about helping prepare you that you have a bigger or a deeper impact on those people that God's called you to impact. Now for some of us, that's just a one-to-one impact. God's saying, I want to change you into a masterpiece in order that you can have a deeper impact with your family, the two or three or four or five people that you spend uh, your life with. For others um, who have a wider leadership context, the Lord is saying, I want to like make your life more potent in order that your impact can go wider to a larger audience, you know, so some, you know, that might have a national scale to their uh, ministry or their job, their calling, as it were, both are the same thing. Um, God wants to say, I, I want to widen your impact in that way. And uh, look, at the end of the day, I think the Lord is is taking us through um, a process of preparation to mature the flavor, to give us a deeper flavor in our lives, because the world is craving something different. The the taste in the mouth that the world is leaving right now is causing a lot of people to gag. They're not happy. They're sick of it. They're over it. They're looking for something different. And I believe the Lord is wanting to transform us in order that we can be the message that the world is actually looking for. And so I want to leave you with that. I want to encourage you. Um, uh, please be patient with me as I go through this process because the Lord's cooking me multiple times and uh, taking me through the distillation process. And it's not comfortable. And sometimes if you see me, you might think that I'm a little bit distant. That's probably this. I'm deeply engrossed in the process that God's got me in. So please forgive me for that and be patient with me. I uh, just want to say thanks for being part of the community. Thanks for going on a journey with us you know, here at Coffee with Phil. And again, you know, bless someone by sharing this podcast with them or finding an episode in the channel that you know would help someone in time that they're going through because you are the solution to help them find the answers through God. So God bless you. Have a fantastic day. And I look forward to catching up with you real, real soon.